Hi, welcome in. Um, so it says here you've been a lifelong self-described social justice warrior. Uh, but lately, over the past year, you've grown concerned that all of your activism has been at best spinning your wheels, at worst, actively beneficial to elite interests. Um, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for being willing to confront these like tough questions. And that's, that's what we do here at the Deference Politics Rehabilitation Center. Um, so first, I want to gather a little bit of background on your organizing history, if that's okay. Um, let's start with your online activism. Uh, it says here you've had a Twitter account from 2017 to 2023. Uh, we did have a look through um, most of your online activism work, and it looks like the bulk of that work was bullying debut YA fantasy authors and their fans and anyone who associated with those authors or their fans um, because said authors included problematic representation in their fantasy books. Is that correct? Is that a fair assessment? Okay. Um, and just to be clear, during that period, 2017 to the present, uh, were you aware that millions of people worldwide were suffering from hunger, enslavement, mass incarceration, preventable disease, war, genocide, and that all life on earth was threatened by global warming? You, you were aware. Okay. Uh, but the YA fantasy uh, debut books still seem like top, top, top priority. Okay. Hey, 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 it's okay. Hey, relax. It's all right. Uh, I know this is going to be hard for you to understand right now, but no one here at the center is interested in punishing you. Uh, we're not going to dogpile you, shun you, um, call for boycotts of you, or try to deplatform you like you did to those debut YA fantasy authors. Um, because you're a, a flawed person or you made mistakes or e or even for your sins. We're, we're just interested in helping you become more effective. Okay? Um, yeah. So, so it's all good. We've all been there. Um, let's keep going. Uh, oh, look, it, it says you've done some real life organizing in your community. That's great. That's so good. Um, so it says you were working with a local socialist organization. Uh, and you were chair of the processes working group from, let's see, it looks like you met 17 times between 2016 and 2018. Can you tell me a bit about what the processes working group did in that um, socialist org? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so to summarize what I'm hearing, it sounds like all of those meetings were meetings about how to have better meetings. Is that, is that a fair assessment? Well, certainly process is important, um, although 17 meetings about meetings does seem maybe a bit high. Um, were there any other campaigns you worked on during that time with the socialists? Oh, great. Oh, you planned a local art festival fundraiser for hurricane relief? That's wonderful. Oh, no, you didn't plan the fundraiser. You planned a boycott of the fundraiser. Uh, and why was that? The venue was problematic. Was it unsafe? Was it, was there structural damage? Rats? Mold? Okay, the venue had platformed problematic artists in the past. Um, and those problematic artists would be, okay, the debut YA fantasy authors. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what happened to the, the festival? Did it land on its feet? Did it find another venue that was less problematic? No? Okay, so the hurricane relief just didn't, we didn't collect that money. Yeah, we didn't have that festival. All right. And what about in your personal life, your family? Is there any way you were sort of bringing liberatory politics into your interpersonal relations? Okay, you got a, a yard sign that said, love is love, science is real. Okay, those, that's nice. And sometimes to work you wear socks that say, read banned books. Okay, great. Well, I think we have everything we need. I'm going to go run some calculations and I'll be back with your results. Okay. Uh, so there's just no easy way to say this. Um, but it does seem like you have cost the proletariat a net total of 167 volunteer hours. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it was a net negative effect. You would have been better off supporting the revolution by playing Stardew Valley. Um, 
Yeah, elites love it, see, when you sow division and break solidarity among the working class. And all of that online dogpiling and shunning on Twitter was a great example of that. Believe it or not, um, debut YA authors are working class. Yeah, most uh, fiction advances are actually far below <laughs> the poverty line. Um, so, you know, way below minimum wage is what authors make for books for the most part. Um, so that, you know, that wasn't, that was uh, benefiting elites. Elites also benefit when we waste the precious limited time of our comrades on trivial or symbolic work. And they especially benefit when the left um, largely sabotages its own constructive projects in the name of moral purity. And that's what happened there with that, that festival you got shut down um, for the problematic venue. Hey, it's okay. Listen, all of us here at the center, we are ex-deference politics activists. There is hope for you. Um, and we're gonna help you move towards a more constructive politics. So let's start that work, okay? Um, I have some mantras for you this week. I'm gonna give you three. And before you engage in any kind of activism online or in your real life, just do some deep breathing and repeat these to yourself, okay? The first mantra is, and repeat it to me here. My comrades are not disposable. Now you, my comrades are not disposable. Very good, my comrades are not disposable. Number two, matters of life and death matter more than symbols and semantics. Okay, I know that was a long one. Let's break it up, your turn. Matters of life and death matter more than symbols and semantics. Very good, perfect. All right, you got it. Last one for this week. Punishment is not a tool of liberation. Let's hear it back. It's not a tool of liberation. Very good. I know that one's, that one's tough, but meditate on it and see what comes up for you, okay? Um, I'm also going to assign you some further reading, okay? So here's what I want you to pick up this week. This is um, Olufemi Otaiwo's Elite Capture, How the Powerful Took Over Identity Politics and Everything Else. This is really going to help you deconstruct the deference politics you've been trapped in and move towards a constructive politics. Finally, I'm going to give you some homework, which is to practice mutual weight. Give your time, give some of your wealth this week, to a group that is organizing mutual aid for some kind of community that is in need. Mm, no, let's try to stay away from 501c3 organizations, okay? Let's try to donate um, to a more grassroots project or to an individual family or person, all right? And just see how, see what comes up for you from that. And scene. I hope you enjoyed that skit. And guess what? Speaking of mutual aid, I want to tell you about Laud al Ada this week, which is a group that's organizing uh, mutual aid and relief for watermelon families that are displaced into Cairo right now. You may have seen them because Jacob Berger has been uh, fundraising a lot for them. And um, they have, but still, despite all of his like celebrity attention on this group, they have a tiny amount of followers on Instagram and even fewer here on TikTok. So first, I want y'all to go follow at Laud NGO. It's the same at Instagram and on TikTok. And if you'd like to fulfill your constructive homework this week by donating to Laud Al Ada for mutual aid, you can enter a giveaway for a signed first edition hardcover copy of my book, The Free People's Village. Simply donate at least $5 or as much as you are able to Laud Al Ada, um, and then send me a screenshot of your receipt to t4gaza at gmail.com, the letter T, the number four, gaza at gmail.com, and you'll be entered to win this week's signed personalized book. You'll find them at the first fundraising link in my bio. And remember, there is life after deference politics, and I love you and you're amazing and you're my mushbucha.